Hey everyone, welcome to Ravencraft Magic. This is the Norse Goddess series, episode 4, Freya, the Goddess of Love, Beauty, and Life. When there's nothing left of you of love, beauty, and life. The name Freya is Norse for lady, and Freya is from the tribe called the Vanir. Um, this was a tribe separate from the Aesir in the beginning, and they had wars and battles, and they decided that their wars and battles were not worth destroying the world. So, in order to end their problems, they offered to give hostages um, they weren't hostages as we think, um, it's just kind of giving over, you know, members of their tribe to the other tribe to work together in a peaceful offering to basically show that they can combine and work together to progress and build a better world for everyone. The Vanir gods represented fertility, um, fertility in the land and nature, and also fertility as in reproduction in humans and animals and things on the earth as well. As far as I found in my studies, uh, the only gods listed as the Vanir are the goddess Nerthus, the god Njord, and uh, Freya, and her brother Freyr. Now there is some question that these two tribes were even separate because there is representations of Thor being a god called on for fertility as well. So the story about the two tribes may be a, a later story written in North mythology. Now Freya was not only about love and beauty, she was also about magic and witchcraft. Now in North mythology the craft they called it was Seder. Now a lot of people have their different ideas of what Seder actually was but I think it was a combination of a lot of crafts um, involving divination, meditation, um, I think a lot of healing was used and also something called shamanism. This was kind of the label taken by the male figure that would practice in these crafts. They would take on the name of the shaman. A lot of Native American tribes today also use the label shaman or shamanism in their practice. Now, it is said in the myths and the stories that the goddess Freya is the one who taught Odin about Seder and the practices of witchcraft. It seems Odin and Freya had a very good relationship and this might have to do with the reason why Freya gets first pick of the heroes that are slain on the battlefield and the other half Odin takes with him to his hall in Valhalla. Now there's a lot of arguments from people that say witchcraft and things like that aren't involved in North mythology and the practice of some North religions but if you read the myths and the stories, it clearly states that Freya practices these things and she shares these things with Odin and the humans alike. So she is labeled with granting the gift of magic and wisdom to Odin and the humans. Now, for all Freya's grace and beauty, she does have one weakness, and her weakness is material possessions. And there was this one certain possession that she really needed to have. It was called Bringsagamen and it was a necklace made by four dwarves and she needed this necklace so badly she had to have it so the dwarves told her that she must spend four nights with them 
in order to obtain the necklace. And she needed the necklace so badly, um, she did what they said and spent the night with all four of the dwarves and she got what she wanted. She got what she desired. As well as the dwarves got what they desired. And Freya is also a representative of desire. Now, Freya also represents the aspect of the vulva. Now, a vulva is the guide or, or the seer or the sorceress or sorcerer of the tribe or the village, you know, the person that everyone went to for their answers and problems. Now, vulvas would also travel from tribe to tribe and they were highly honored and they were given you know, commodities such as housing and food and other things in exchange for their readings and their guidance and their blessings. A visit from the Volvo was considered a great blessing and they honored her greatly when she arrived. Now, another role that the Volvo would play for tribes is in battle tactics. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the leaders and stuff would you know, go over their plans with the vulva and see what she has to say and advice and what things she can do to aid or assist them. And, you know, it's funny that a lot of women were in charge of a lot of the battle tactics and leadership in the ancient times, which I think this helped a lot because it brought another aspect or another mind or another view to the battlefield. There are many women in history that played a great role on the battlefield. In the ancient times, a lot of the women were often involved in the plans and governing and leading their tribe also in planning of battle tactics. Now, Freya is often associated with having two cats. Um, she is granted with the gift of making two cats work together, which is said to be impossibly hard. She also is associated with the falcon. Um, she is said to take on the form or shape shift into a falcon when wearing a certain cloak and she has the ability to fly. Now Freya's Hall is called Folkvanger. Um, it's Norse for Hall of the Folk. Now it is said that you should invoke Freya for fertility or productivity of all kinds. Now, you could be talking about your farmland, or you could be talking about pregnancy, or trying to get pregnant. Um, Freya was often associated with sex and reproduction, and she was invoked, and she can aid you in assisting with giving birth. Freya is also called the goddess of life, and it is said that she survives Ragnarok. Now, Ragnarok, as we know, is the great destruction of the world, and not quite the end, but... It is the end of a certain time and the beginning of a new time, and Freya is said to survive this time. Now, Freya is also associated with a Futhark rune. Um, this rune is called Fihu, and it represents fertility or mobile wealth. Um, wealth was often considered to be your wealth in cattle back in the ancient times, so mobile wealth as in your cattle or your livestock. And it also represents the fertility aspect of Freya. Now, in the sagas, Freya also has a boar called Hildsvini. The colors that Freya represents are green and red. And I believe green is to represent, you know, the, the growth and the fertility, and red represents the blood and the life of everything. The goddess Freya was a very important goddess in North mythology, and she continued her presence after uh, you know paganism was converted a lot of Catholic and Christian and other religions converted the Norse gods or goddesses into other deities and Freya well she was the goddess of love and sex and obviously the Catholic and the Christian religions don't have a place for a goddess of sex or god of sex so that's kinda why I think she survived and held her own um, she was never transformed or replaced with any other type of deity. Now, of course, Christianity was only a one-god religion, but they took all the pagan gods and goddesses and kind of transferred them into the angels or the saints. All right, let's kind of go over what we learned here. Uh, Freya is the Norse goddess of love, beauty, and life, called on for fertility in field or farm work. Also, you can call upon her for the fertility in 
reproduction or trying to get pregnant. Um, she is the goddess of creating life, so she can assist you with that as well. Um, the colors that represent Freya are green and red. Uh, the, the rune that works with Freya is the Fihu rune, which represents fertility and mobile wealth. And her land or her hall is called Sesrum near the many seated, and Folkvanger is located within. Now, the animals associated with Freya was the falcon, in which she could take the form of and fly, um, Hildsvini, her boar, and also the cats that she can make work together, and also she has re representations and ties to the mare or the horse. For more information on the falcon cloak story about Freya, there is a story called the Glinga Saga, and it talks about her falcon plumes and how she obtained them and how they make her shapeshift and turn into the falcon and let her fly. So I hope this episode kind of helped you learn a little bit more about the Norse goddess Freya. And I hope you enjoy the music that's played within this video. Um, it is from a great artist named Anila, and she has given me permission to use her music within my Norse Goddess series. So I hope you enjoy this, and I will leave you off with another great song by her. And like I always say, stay on the positive path.